Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back. It's your boy Magic back up in here. And uh, today we're going to be talking about gang staging. Something is that's very important that I notice a lot of people make mistakes on. And while their mixes haven't been turning out the way they should be, it, I mean, listen to your ears, but you can still listen to or keep an eye on the sound as well. Like we say at Magic Minds, man, hear the magic in your music, and, and that's the goal. You want to hear the magic in your music, but you actually want to know where things are. So today I'll be talking about the VU meter and the importance of a VU meter. If, in case you don't know, a VU meter is a volume unit meter, uh, a standard volume indicator. It's a device displaying a representation of the signal uh, level in your audio equipment. Pretty much uh, this right here. This right here is a VU meter. Uh, it's multiple VU meters. Maybe it's a stock VU meter in FL Studio. I don't know. But for me, this is a VU meter I use to kind of graphically, visually know where things are. Like the tonal balance control by Ozone. It lets you know exactly what your mix is missing compared to industry records or things that's out on the radio right now. So that's my visual representation or go-to as far as gain staging. Gain staging is another term that we use as far as making sure your levels are correct. Making sure nothing is distorting, make sure everything blends well at the mixing level before it goes to mastering. So gain staging is so important. And a lot of people think it's a lot of all about the plugins. It's not. It's not all about the plugins. The plugins are to enhance that sound that you're trying to obtain. So gain staging is just blending the sounds together. That's pretty much what gain staging is. And I always look at gain staging as, okay, it's like building a house. You start low and then you get to the ceiling and then you start building on top of the ceiling if you got a second floor, but you always start on the foundation when you build a house. So you start at the low areas. That's why, I mean, that's my mindset when I gain stage. I always do my low end first and then progress and make everything sounds good around that low end and that's the process that you should always try to grasp when you do these beats in FL Studio or at Pro Tools you get a two um a track outs that's the same mentality you should have and I would do more tutorials about track outs where pretty much the same thing applies here applies to any DAW Pro Tools Ab Ableton Live uh what's the other Mixcraft Ad Adobe Audition um, Logic Pro, pretty much that's the same concept. So let's get into it. And the VU meter has been around since the 1940s, by the way. Just want to know the history fact out. And if you guys want to know more about it, uh, I suggest you Google VU meter and look up at uh, what it does. But the, just know that it's a visual representation of what you're hearing. That's all it is. All right. Okay. So we got this VU meter here. And we're going to start here. So. First thing I do, I put my VU meter, I do it in mono. First thing, this is a mixing trick. If you if you mix something in mono and your game stage, everything in mono, I guarantee it's gonna sound 100%, 200% better in stereo. So I always mix in mono, always. That's why I go to the car, it sounds good. If it sounds good in mono and you're not tr tricked or thinking you have something that you don't have or you hear something that's not there, you'll know in mono. Believe me, you will know in mono. Uh, but that's that's my trick. So I got this VU meter and a mono plug-in um, graph. So this is in mono. This VU meter is in mono. I, I, I'll do it again. I go to the plug-in. I go to my plug-ins. Go to my plug-ins. Go to my waves. Just updated that. So VU meter mono just letting you know that's why i did mono you have mono and stereo with this plugin so i do it in mono so pretty much i leave my headroom at 18. headroom is another term we use to create room for mixing other things as like vocals uh snares the hi-hat all the sounds together so you have room to enhance the polished product in the mastering phase that's the process of headroom you always want to create headroom where you're not too close to zero decibels 
or the zero db area so i try to curate as much headroom as possible so that's that's that first thing i do i got i got my beat laid out i i grab all these sounds i hold control and drag this all the way out and i bring them all the way down Next thing I do, oh, make sure I put that back at zero. Okay, first next thing I do, I grab, like I said, make sure that's that's there and it's on. Want to make sure that's green. Want to make sure that's green. And I go to my 808. I start my 808 first because that's the lowest of the low end. That's like the sub region. I like to start with my low low low, low frequencies first and watch the video meter. My goal is to make sure or get it to peak around five. That's my goal. So we're gonna play it and we're gonna bring it up. Let's see, uh, 808's a kicker. 808's I'm pretty much right here. My 808's are here. So I'm gonna go back to our view mixer, view mixer and go back to the uh, view meter and go back to my 808 and pretty much bring the volume up so I get to around five. Like kind of peaking at five. That's the goal. So that that seemed like a sweet spot. So that's my goal right there. So I go back to this, go back to my view mixer, and I bring my kick up to where it hits around three. Let's go back to here. I don't know how to make that stay. Uh, if you guys know, please let me know in the comments how to make this plugin stay, even though you go to another track. So we go to kick. We want this to make it hit around three. We want that five to be around three. We don't want nothing clipping yet. Where my kick and combination, oh, there's right here, kick combination right here. Sorry. Obviously it's hitting too hard. And another thing I did that you should do with your 808 to kick is side chain them. And I'll show you that trick as well. Go back to here. So pretty much you hit three when they both hit together. So I go to 808. I use the Fruity Limiter, this I side chain in FL Studio. Uh, Fruity Limiter. And I side I side chain that to my kick. So pretty much, and then I just threshold. I I, I just address adjust the threshold to mat to duck to duck whenever that kick is hitting. So watch this. It's about to hit. So let's go to the fruit limiter again. You'll see it. You're gonna see a, a transient right here. I'll show you. I want to pause it. That's the kick. My 808's ducking every time. That's over. That's over ducking. I don't want. I want kind of blend in each other. I want to blend in together. That's that's the goal. Go to a point right here. It's, it's about the same thing. So I'll go back to the fruit limiter. Kind of want to blend in. That's that's my kick, and that the 808 is ducking every time it hits, so it's not it's not combating each other. They're, they're blending together. Sound good to me. I still got my 808 and the sound still full. And everything else I just bring up together now. It's it's just it's just model.
up our looks That's about it, people. That's Gain Station. Using the view meter. Power of Gain Station. Sounds good. Compliments each other. It doesn't sound... The goal is to make it sound good, not distorted. That's it. That's the goal. Simple. Simple and plain. Till next time, people.